hindsight being 2020, I should have taken a screenshot of the club when we first started. But as you can see, especially up here on the right, our training facilities and youth facilities are some of the best in the Premier League. Our junior coaching is among the best in the Premier League. And our youth recruitment is slowly growing. It was 16 at the beginning of last season. We're now youth recruitment level one. So it's going to keep going up. Probably at the end of this episode, I'm going to ask them for an update to the training facilities and youth facilities. Selhurst is still in very good condition. The capacity is a little bit on the low side for me, but then again, I live in America where we get 105,000 people to a college football game for crying out loud. I mean, Atlanta United draws 70,000 plus down, down in Georgia. So, you know, maybe I'm kind of biased against that. I've been playing around with the Nyman, uh, oh, what the heck is it called? Nyman's kit basher. So we've got some new uniforms. I kind of like them. Uh, I'll probably be fiddling around with them every season just because and probably do it in the next save too. Um, there's still Puma kits. I wasn't a huge fan of the stripes, but I like this and the fading and Atlantic Airways that, that kind of fit in really nicely. Wanted to get away from the, uh, whole gambling website thing. Uh, 42 years old now on 89,000 a week. My preferred formation is a 4 3 one, two, which is interesting because this is the first season we've played it. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out was the scouting. Now this... I know if you compared it to the beginning of the season, there was a lot less green and maybe a lot less orange. Now, one of the things that is coming into play, and I totally did not realize this because it absolutely slipped my mind, is people like your recruitment analysts and your sports scientists and your physios, they will bring knowledge to a particular area. So as an example, Gabor Cassetti, who is a performance analyst is from Hungary. So he gives us 100% knowledge of Hungary. You know, Patty McCarthy, who is a coach, he's my under-23 head coach, gives us knowledge of Ireland. I completely forgot about this. And this is probably one of the things you can do, especially if you do have a hole in your area. Like, I have a hole in my area right now in, in southern Africa. I thought for sure I had a guy scouting South Africa, and I don't. I don't have anybody scouting Southeast Asia, well, Southeast Asia either because, frankly... It's kind of the last place you really want to scout. And if I do get a couple more scouts, then yeah, I'll throw a couple more scouts there. But as you can see, uh, especially in countries where we don't have a performance analyst or a non-scouting member of the staff with knowledge of that country, uh, Hassan Al-Hakim is my most knowledgeable guy about Romania now, but that was because he started out there. If we look at him, Scandinavia, and uh, I guess not. He's Scandinavia, and now he's got... 67% knowledge of Romania. And some of the other things I wanted to point out was when I first got him, he was 15 ability, 14 potential. Now he's 16 and 15. So that's one of the things I think is kind of cool to kind of track and see how well your scouts are doing. Our rural knowledge, we're, we're almost 100% in South America. We're at 76% in Eastern Europe. We're better than half in most every good region or region I would consider good. Um, East Asia, I scout just simply because there's freaking 2 billion people there. You would think 11 of them would be world-class football players, but at the point, I'm kind of disappointed. Although I did find a South Af or a South Korean, I should say, youth player who looks like he's got a potential, uh, except I'm already stacked at that particular position. Western Europe, we're 94%. Northern Europe, uh, 73%. But it's, it's things like this where it's like individual countries where, you know, you didn't even, you know, uh, Frank Minviel was Central Africa. And when I first got him, he was 11 PA, 10 PP. Now he's 14 and 13. You know, now he's Cameroon, France, Central African Republic, Chad, Kuro, Guinea, Congo. So, you know, he's been he's been scouting around those countries. He's been doing well. The adaptability are 20 for him. And the low determination is a bit of a, of a, of a bummer there. It means he's not as determined to f go out and find the players. He'll adapt to a country. Finding the players that live there, eh, it's kind of up in the air. But one of the things I did want to look at was um, you, do get, you do get scouting knowledge from your affiliates. So I have scouting knowledge from Hong Kong based on my affiliation with uh, so show. Coventry gives us some in a few areas. Fleetwood gives us some in Montserrat in the Caribbean, which I think is interesting. One of the things I did want to do was go to the scouting center. Or actually, we want to go to responsibilities. We want to go to... The staff, uh, this is the, 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 the skin here, I can add in columns. So we're going to add in player ability. 
and player potential. And we're just going to compare them to what they originally were. And I need to move determination over. So Kevin Hunt was 15-18, he's 15-18. Abdul Karim was 10-9, now he's 12-10. Arthur Wolf was 16-18, now he's 17-19. Hakeem was 15-14, now he's 16-15. Helmberg was 16-16, now he's 17-17. Materna was 16-18, he's 18-19. Min, uh, Minviel, we already looked at him. He was 11-10. Now he's 14-3. Tomolata was 15s. Now he's 16s. Trish Jones was 16s. Now he's 18s. Kasparik was 13-14. Now he's 13-16. Kanepa was 17-17. Now he's 17-20. Uh, let's see. Kasparik, 30. Uh, yep. Uh, Cruz was 17-19. Now he's 18-20. Santos was 17-17, now he's 18-17. Min was 14-15, now he's 15-17. Viles hasn't improved from his 15-15. Sikovic is 13-14, he was 13-14. Acosta is 15-15, he was 14-14. Santorobo hasn't changed. Badras changed, he was 11s, now he's 12s. And then, uh, I haven't gone into the recruitment analyst stuff. I don't track from where they begin. But the scouts, I do, just simply to see how far they grow. That's one of the reasons I also tend to go towards younger scouts. An older scout has probably reached the limits of what he's going to get to. Younger scouts, they have the opportunity to grow. And in a situation like this, you take a Frank Mianville because his knowledge base was Central Africa. And even though he was a 10-11 at the time, because he's young, you know he's going to improve if you send him out on scouting assignments all the time. And I have my scouting assignments set up to indefinite. They go on year-round. I may change the locations. I may add a specific country for them within the region to scout, which you can do. And, you know, he's been here three years, four years, I should say, four years, and he's gone up a total of... Six points in those two areas, which considering, you know, I don't know how much research has been done into how to improve a scout other than send him out scouting. That's that's really good. And 14-13 is not a bad scout, especially for that region of the country. So it has been a while since we last played and we have not lost. I am really, really surprised, to be honest with you. Uh, we last played Benfica. West Ham or was it Benfica Chelsea? I'll be honest, I don't remember. Um, I know we lost to Chelsea. Clark had a goal. Clark had a brace of goals. Sebastiano had a goal, three four. They got all their goals from the first half. This was the game we lost. We we tried coming back, we didn't. We beat Leicester one nil thanks to a Xerxes goal in the sixtieth minute. Xerxes then had a hat trick's worth of goals against Leeds. We beat them three one. We beat we beat Bayern four three. And the interesting thing about this was, this was kind of a rotated side we had already qualified i wasn't really looking to do anything other than play without getting my guys injured so we you know we had safana from goal duvern kasuno ridewald and natan started chaudhuri richie and skip started baina started attacking midfielder verona Poligri started up top laird Xerxes, and esposito came on as the substitutes Lee scored in the second minute. Bain equalized in the fifth. Wurtz scored in the 13th minute. Verone equalized in the 22nd. Skip scored in the 64th. Edwards equalized in the 69th. And then Skip got the winner in the 86th minute. And it was a fairly even game. I don't know if Bayern didn't take it. I'm not going to say they didn't take it seriously. Because that is pretty much their first team. And in all honesty, their second team is as good as their first team. When you're, playing, when you're bringing players like Sané and Edward and Illich off the bench you know you have a deep bench. So I think our defense did okay. I mean, Riedewald was on a 6-5. Everyone else was average. A lot of their guys were simply average or uh, kind of underwhelming. Dragowski, who's their backup keeper, was on a 6-3. Tav was on a 6-1. Goretzka was on a 6-4. We were just better than them enough to win. And then we're playing Real Madrid in the first knockout round. So, you know, from the proverbial fine pan to the proverbial fire. Uh, we beat Wofford 2-1 thanks to a brace of Xerxes goals. We beat Villa 2-1, Esposito a goal, Clark a goal. We beat Wolves 2-0, uh, Natan and Xerxes each with goals. We beat United 2-0, Zagadou a goal, Xerxes a goal. And we beat Tottenham 2-1 thanks to a brace of Esposito goals. 
That currently leaves us one point behind Man City for second place, five points ahead of Liverpool, ten points ahead of Chelsea. It is a three-team race for the top of the league, and we are in it. The interesting thing is, I mentioned this in a previous episode, by this time in previous years in the save, there was already one team who was at least 6, 10, 12 points ahead. And you know they were going to win the league. The fight was going to be second through seventh. You know, Man City's in a dogfight. Liverpool is nipping on our heels. Chelsea has maybe an outside chance, but I highly doubt it. So instead of one team breaking away from the pack, it's three teams breaking away from the pack. Transfer window-wise, we have not been that active. The one thing we have done that is probably the most consequential is we recalled Tizier from his loan at Rennes because he qualified for a work permit. Uh, we did have some players move. Gabriel Verón went to Everton. I brought him in to be kind of like a third striker, um, second backup on the wings. And because we switched to the 4-3-2-1, he was kind of lost in the shuffle. He did some solid work for us. He had more than a few appearances. He was very much a squad player. He came off the bench on more than one occasion. He had some very nice games for us. He was a very solid contributor. It's just, you know, this season he wasn't contributing. And when he said, look, I'd like more playing time, I was honest with him. I said, look, my formation, I don't see you getting playing time. You're at best my fourth striker option, and I'm not playing wingers. I could play him in the mid, but he would be at best my third midfielder. I could play him in the in the, in the, uh, the center mid, the attacking mid, and he'd be at best my third option there. I said, look, I'll move you. I put him out there. Everton snapped him up for $17 million. For a player we bought him for 3.8, that's a good turnaround. Same can't be said for uh, Jamie Sione. He is one of the first players we brought on board. Uh, was kind of lost in the midfield shuffle, was a little bit older, was the captain of the club, but wasn't getting the playing time he wanted either. I said, look, I'll move you on. We sold him for 5.25. I'm kind of miffed about this because if you look at him, they say he's valued. Well, okay, when we had him, he was valued at like 18 or something like that. That's what I initially listed him for. And he pitched a fit. He's like, why are you trying to sell me for that much money? I said, okay, how much do you think? And he was like, well, let's go here. And I said, well, let's go there. And there was five and a half. And that's what we ended up selling him for. And then Sean O'Toole, who was a midfielder that we brought on board as a free agent, more for depth than anything else. He played a lot of under 23 games. Um, he had some average seasons, what I would consider average seasons there. I mean, a 7.08 in the under 23 league. He had a 7.06 in the under 23 league. Here, this this wasn't bad, but he was a two-star current, three-star potential player who was never going to see starting time with the first team here. Sheffield United wanted him for 300000 I said, sure. So for a guy we brought on a free, sold for 300000 that's actually not bad. And then uh, Hamza Chowdhury is leaving on the 26th. He's going to zen it for seven point five million. That's already that's already guaranteed. He was very much in the Sayoni mold. Felt he wasn't going to be able to contribute at this level anymore. Wanted to move on. I was like, dude, I'm more than happy to have you move on. I am quite happy to do that for you. Eunice Munsaw, twenty three year old American midfielder, jack of uh, jack of all trades, midfielder, midfielder. I want a ton of money for him too. Luckily, I'm kind of already set there. So, we're about 15 minutes in. We're just going to play the one game today. It's going to be the FA Cup third round match. And then we're going to skip these six games, or these five games, come back for Brighton, Derby opponent, of course. And then our first round at Real Madrid. And then we'll come back and we'll play Man City in Real Madrid. These two games here are going to be key to the entire season because, of course, they're going to be key to the entire season. I would, to be honest with you, I would much rather beat Man City than I would beat Real Madrid at this point. The one position I am kind of, sort of, on the lookout for would probably be one of those jack-of-all-trades defensive back lines. Is one of those jack-of-all-trades defensive back players like Duvern. But part of me also says... I'm looking at Duvern going, oh, he's only two stars. But he's a good two stars. He's a capable player for his role. So, plus I promised him I'd get him playing time. And I need to do that. 
So this is who we're starting today. We've got Safanov and goal, and the Tan Zagadu Kasuma and Laird is the defensive back four. Laird has been on a really good run lately. Gallagher, Skip, and Stockbridge as the midfielders. Baina is the attack midfielder. Xerxes and Peligri up top as the strikers. That is because, nope, I'm bringing out Fatuu for Baina. And Esposito is not entirely a match fit. Neither's Peligri. Where is Clark? Clark is injured. That's right. He hurt his foot. Was that the back strain? I can't remember. But it was a short-term injury. Ayab Gedek got his work permit, and I am trying to loan him out, and I am not being all that successful. Actually, what I need to do is do something like this. Squad. Move to affiliate. Stevenage. Next transfer window. Yes. Hopefully he'll accept that. Admiral Grigoras. Tizier. Zagadu is wanted. Well, I take that back. He was wanted by Bayern, and they moved away from him. Kasunu was wanted, and they moved away from him. He was wanted by Real Madrid and a couple of others. So... Uh, Xerxes is, uh, RB Leipzig made an offer for him and he's like, I'm not interested in talking to him. So I was like, okay, I'm totally going to, uh, ignore that offer and hit decline. So, uh, pick for Rivera, Rusik, Kabaman, Lewis, Bernardo, Sal, Kent Whitaker. Hey, Verone. He's literally turning right around and playing us. Okay. Part of me thought I knew that. Now, what I was looking for, yeah, the 3D uniforms did come in. That was cool. Okay. Well done, Nyman. Kasunu on the throne to skip. Kasunu crosses in, Peligri's there, and he gets the header. You'll see when we go to the director's view. Well, maybe, hopefully. The uniforms, the 3D uniforms, have indeed changed. Although now I'm looking at it, I probably should have changed the shorts. Marusic to Gabamin, Verone. Out to Lewis. Lewis to Sal, Verone. He was on sides, but he holds it up, gets it back to Lewis, crossed in. Natan heads it away. Bernardo gets to the ball first. He gets the ball back. Xerxes heads it away. Stockbridge to Fatuu. Back up to Xerxes. Xerxes back to Natan. Back to Zagadu. Over to Skip. Skip up to Xerxes. He cuts inside. Pligri's there, but he may have been off sides. I don't see the I don't see the flag going up. That's going to be a VAR off sides. Yep. Skip to Fatuu. Oh, Xerxes got by the defender, and he hit it wide right. Wow. Okay, we have to make one change here, based at least on this. Gallagher, we are going to leave as a box-to-box -box midfielder, but... We want him to stay a little bit wider. We're okay there. And then Fatuu get further forward, moves in channels. Shoot us off to pick up. Natan on the throw in. Skip crosses it in. Oh, Pickford jumps up in the air and grabs that. That was well done. Okay, I'll I'll be 100 percent honest here. Let me. Yeah, I may not have been thinking when I did that. I didn't realize the blue would delve into the blue that's that's really kind of awful we'll change that after this game it'll be different next game uh, data analyst stockbridge to skip skip up to laird laird feeds peligri peligri goes wide crosses it in xerxes there off the post we've had a ton of world war kids these past few games Oh, Xerxes from the top of the box. And in for the goal. Yep. 
And that is halftime with two shot or with two goals. And that is halftime with a 2-0 lead with nine shots, four on target. Now they're six and one. We are doing well. Well, that was wide left. Yeah. Safanov to Zagadu. Gallagher back to Kasunu. Zagadu to Skip. Skip up to Xerxes. Xerxes over to Peligri. Peligri out to Natan all alone on the left. He crosses it in. Xerxes there. Nice save. However, the ball goes straight to Laird. Skip up to Fatuu. He turns around and takes the shot. Ball bounces back and forth. Zagadu finally gets it, heads it down to Gallagher. And that was the highlight. It's going to be a corner kick. Fatuu crosses it in, and it is headed high and right by Zagadu. Okay, we're going to make a couple of changes here. Gallagher, we're going to get off and bring on Ricci. And then we're going to change Ricci and skip. Poligri, we're going to bring off and bring on Esposito. And we're going to save our last sub. 17 shots, 6 on target for us. We're doing really well. Natan to Ricci to skip. Back to Natan. Gets the ball to Xerxes. Xerxes uh, kind of lost in the crowd, but Fatua ended up with it. Ricci to Stockbridge. Out to Laird, all along the right. He crosses it in. Esposito's there. And it's off the crossbar. Pickford bombs it forward. Kasunu to Natan. Gets it back to Skip. Xerxes to Ricci to Stockbridge. Esposito back to Stockbridge. He lost it up into space. Skip back to Xerxes. Skip is there. Passes it off to Esposito. And that is Esposito's... <laughs> goal of the season. They're saying he's offsides. If he was offsides, wouldn't that mean Skip was offsides too? His ninth goal of the season. Skip is there. Gets it to Xerxes. Xerxes back to Ricci. Up into space. Skip to Esposito. Were they looking at Skip being offsides? Okay. That could have been it. That's what they're looking at. We may have gotten lucky there. Oh, and Seema breaks up the clean sheet with a header. Well done, them. And that is the game with a 3-1 victory. Thanks to goals by Poligri, Xerxes, and Esposito. 23 shots, 9 on target. Two woodwork hits. We beat Everton in the FA Cup. Well done, guys. It was a good win for us. In the rain at Selhurst. We are going to save this here. If we look at the depth chart, we're not really weak anywhere. Xerxes, Peligri, Esposito, Clark is the strikers. Fatua is a fifth striker, for crying out loud. Xerxes, Esposito, Gallagher, Fatuu, Bena, but it's more Esposito and Fatuu, although Fatuu is my primary guy there. Stockbridge, Skip, Kasunu, Gallagher, Ricci, and 18 more players. I mean, Riedewald can play there. Fatuu could play there. Grigoras can step up and play there. You know, maybe not a jack-of-all-trades backline player like Duvern. Maybe just someone like Laird who can play either side. What I may end up doing, though against some of the weaker opponents, is do something like move Kas or move Kasunu over to the left. Can Zagadu also play the left? No, move Kasunu. What I might do in the future, especially if I need to rest Laird, is move Kasunu over to the right, bring up Tizier, Grigoras, and have Natan start on the left. Or I need I need to get Teo out of Admirola playing time. I know his leg injuries last year were kind of a bit much, but he's been improving. And so I'm hoping, you know, one of these days he'll get his third star. His potential is down to three stars. That's a bit of a bummer. But considering the quality of guys we have in the squad, that's to be expected. So, but if he gets a three if he gets a third star, I'll be happy. But then again, we'll wait and see. I may send him out on loan. We'll have to take a look. That's one of the things I'm gonna do now after we uh 
call this an episode. The transfer window is still going. we got 20-something days left on it. See if we can't strengthen the club. Maybe move some of the lesser players out for some money. Bring in some new youngsters. Kind of strengthen the squad for the future. Even though there's only two years left in the save. I may play this offline after the save ends. Just because it, it's going well. And it's interesting. And I want to see what we can do. But um, it remains to be seen. So I'd be interested in what you think of our transfer moves so far. How we're performing in the league. Do you think we can finish second or first? And do we have a chance to finish second or first? Are we going to throw it all away? Anything is possible. But if you did like what you've seen and heard, please vote like. Subscribe to the channel for more content. Questions, criticism, comments. Leave those down below. I'll answer those as fast as I can. My name is FM Jellicoe. I thank you for watching.